everybody. It is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is called Let Me Blow Your Mind, and we're going to find out their thoughts and feelings today. Also, just a quick announcement for those of you that would like to book a natal chart reading with me. I do have um, my website up. It's called Lilith Rising Astrology. And I've opened up appointments for February. So there's certain days that I've opened up appointments on February. You'll find the link in my description box below if you'd like to book a natal chart reading with me, okay? And with that being said, I hope everybody's having a good start to their 2023 so far. Have a little drink of water there. And we're gonna go ahead and get into your reading. And as always, I do personal readings as well too, and if you're interested in booking a personal tarot reading with me, you can find links in the description box below for prices and how to do it and all the information that you need. So let's go ahead and get into it. Pile number one is represented by the yellow tea light. Pile number two is the purple tea light. And pile number three is the lime green tea light. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and get into your reading. You can go to the description box below to find your timestamp. And of course, you're more than welcome to watch more than one pile as more than one pile may have a message for you. So let's go ahead and get into the reading for today. All right. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the yellow tea light and today's reading is called Let Me Blow Your Mind. And we're going to find out what is going on with your person and what their current thoughts and feelings are, pile number one, okay? Hope everybody is doing well out there in the universe. Hmm? These cards are so slippery. <laughs> they are very hard to shuffle. Um, and they also have an interesting smell to them. I will tell you that much. I got them off of Amazon and I think sometimes, you know, the paper they are, this, these are actually waterproof. So that may be part of the reason too, these cards are waterproof. So they will last a long time. Anyway, I don't know why I'm telling you guys that. Let's go ahead, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into your reading. Spirits, angels, and guides, can you tell me for my beautiful pile number ones, can you tell me what is this person thinking or feeling as it relates to pile number one? Okay, so there's the Queen of Swords reverse. So you guys are like, I have no idea, Natalie. I couldn't read this person if I tried. Maybe some of you have even tried to get people's advice on this relationship or on this situationship or on this crush, whatever you got going on here, pile number one, and you just can't seem to find a reading that resonates or you cannot seem to really understand what you should do. And maybe some of the advice, advice that you've been getting has been kind of crappy about this situation. Okay. So let's go ahead and see. All right. The queen of swords reverse can be pretty mean too. So there may be, ooh, there may be somebody in this connection that has um, had some words, okay? Had words, all right? Let's go ahead and see. Spirit, can you show me? I feel it more though as somebody who just didn't know what to say, okay? Pile number one, that's what I really feel. Somebody who just doesn't know what to say. We have the seven of pentacles on the bottom of the deck. So getting tired of a situation, ready to abandon ship, getting real tired, of the same old, same old type of situation um, and wanting to return to a time when the energy is more balanced. I feel like maybe in this connection, pile number one, you and this person don't really know what to say to each other and there could be some awkwardness in this connection at this moment, okay? But let's go ahead and see. Let me blow your mind. You know, what's funny is um, the Queen of Swords can definitely blow someone's mind, okay? So the Queen of Swords reversed is telling me that somebody doesn't, has a lot to say, but doesn't have the right, you know, sometimes we have a lot to say to someone or a lot to say about something, but the moment isn't right or the situation isn't right or it's not the right, it's like not the right venue, okay? 
like you see someone somewhere, it's not the right venue or it's not the right time. But let's go ahead and see. I'm going to get the Oracle cards out and then we'll get to the tarot cards. We have shadow. Okay. We have lightning, sudden change, shocking news, a surprise, an epiphany, an upheaval, or a transformation. Well, that is definitely a blowing your mind type of thing. We have third party, oh boy, okay? So somebody could have shocked you with some news pile number one, or it could be a herd it through the grapevine type of a thing here. We have I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know why I just said I'm parry. <laughs> I'm parry, I'm sorry, okay? Talk about not being able to get the words out or not being able to say things right. Third party, I'm sorry. Regrets. Oh boy. Pile number one. Okay. I mean, if this connection hasn't really been going anywhere or it's not really moving forward or it's not really, you know, good things haven't been happening, I think it has to do with this person. Okay. I think this person is you know, the one to blame. And I also think some of you here with the Queen of Swords reversed have been left in the dark. Um, I feel like this person thinks that they have been very, with this Seven of Pentacles, that they have been uh, very unsuccessful in this connection with you. Um, you know, the Seven of Pentacles in the Tarot is the Lord of Success Unfulfilled. So, you know, this person... This connection, though, because it's the Seven of Pentacles reversed, this person could have had seen brighter days, better days with you when things were flowing, you know, smoothly and the energy was going well. But, um, yeah, shocking news about a third party and someone like, hey, I'm sorry. I regret what I said. I regret what I did. I regret. And I think if this person could fully confess what's on their mind and what they're seeing about their life pile number one i think it would be very very shocking okay so let's see talk we have the sea serpent here and the shadow okay so this person the sea serpent in this tarot deck is representative of the sacral chakra okay so we talk we can talk about a shadow that is left with someone where they feel cold where they feel like, you know, they're not going to have the intimacy, the love, the care, the affection. Um, it's like with the sea serpent, I want to show my feelings, but I'm scared or I'm afraid. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. We have kindness. Wow. Pile number one, the way that you were with this person or the way that you treated this person, I think this person wasn't expecting it. Okay, this person wasn't expecting you uh, to react the way that you did. Um, and I think in a good way. I think most of the time people would get really upset to hear about something. But I feel like you approach this situation with um, kindness. Okay, even though the Queen of Swords can represent somebody who definitely has a you know, has a, I want to say a hair up their ass. <laughs> but anyway, I, in this situation, I feel like it's, it's the other way, pile number one. I feel you reacted to this person um, in a way that was like very kind and loving. And I feel like this person was very surprised by the way that you reacted towards this whole situation okay uh you didn't rage you didn't scream you didn't yell you weren't angry you didn't say how dare you how could you whatever i feel like you did let this person know that you were disappointed pile number one but i also just feel like you know you did approach this situation from a place of loving kindness okay and I feel like there's nothing that you did wrong in this situation, pile number one. Um, I just heard there's nothing you did wrong. It was just wrong place, wrong time. Um, and I feel like what this person is saying with the sea serpent and kindness, if they could be, you know, like wrapped up in your arms or if they could be, um, you know, if they could be wrapped up in your arms or wrapped up in, 
I just almost wanted to say like a sea of devotion, pile number one. I feel like they would. I feel like this person is like eating their words or I feel like this person um, just kind of wants to like take it all back and put the connection back into like a safe container um, where nothing can really harm it, okay? I also feel like somebody here could have very pretty blue eyes or blue green eyes, all right? And um, I just feel like there is nothing, there could have with shadow here, there could have been some things that this person never explained to you, pile number one. Like they never really explained to you um, the extent of what, of what they truly felt and also why they made certain choices that they did, okay? And I feel like this person is saying they wish the, that they could take it all back, okay? They wish that they could take it all back and they wish that they could have treated you better or they wish that they could have been more honest, right? The Queen of Swords upright is very honest, but the Queen of Swords reversed um, is, you know, a place of lying to oneself or a place of dishonesty, okay? But the truth always comes out, lightning, okay? And I feel like this person is saying, if you just knew what I was dealing with or you just knew what was going on in my life, I think maybe you'd understand more. I don't know, pile number one. I don't know if you are really buying that or if that's really... Uh, if you're really okay with that, I just have to tell you the message I'm getting, okay? These are their thoughts and feelings. So, you know, maybe you say at the end of the day, like, I want to, you know what? I, I'm not open to it, you know, with the Queen of Swords reversed. I'm not open to communicating. I'm not open to it, Natalie. I, I'm, I'm like, I was really kind to this person and I was really patient and caring and devoted towards this person and, you know, they weren't to me. And, you know, I had to find out the hard way. And, you know, of course they have regrets. Like, I don't know, you know, like I can't do anything about that now. And I don't know if they can do anything either. All right. And we have resilience here. And we have the, sci the Cilia. Cilia. I don't know how to uh, pronounce that, but this is from the Deep, Dark, and Dangerous Oracle. So I'm just going to go ahead and read a little bit about this. It's card eight. All right. It says, life throws adversity at you. There is no escaping this. Yet building resilience allows you to handle this better. Building flexibility is a key to developing resilience. Righteous anger is not shameful. Sometimes you get caught between a rock and a hard place and you need to make a decision between two poor outcomes to get to where you need to go. Yeah, the queen of swords, like, you know, having to make a decision that you don't really want to make, having to make a decision between the lesser of two evils and still go with it, okay? Um, most people know of Scylia, Scylia or Scylia were introduced um, to her or were introduced to her through Homer's epic, The Odyssey. Um, Odysseus wants to return home with his men and is told that he will have to pass through the Straits of Messina close to two monsters to do so. Scylia guards one side of the rough and narrow waters. Opposite is Char Charbidius, who is another monster in the shape of an inescapable whirlpool. Wow, it is said that the two monsters were in a narrow, within arrow's range of each other, right? The third party situation, very in range with each other, so that if one didn't get you, the other certainly would. So who was Skylia and was she always a monster? There are a number of origin stories, but again, most relate to a woman being jealous of another and harming her enough that she becomes mon monstrous repeating motif in the ancient Greek world. Before she was turned into a monster, she was a beautiful sea nymph um, and the deities of the sea were her parents. Um, in one myth, it is said that Scylla was transformed by Poseidon's wife by placing a poisonous potion into the pool, okay, uh, which she bathed, all right? So there's a lot of mythology here 
Um, yeah, no one, no crew can boast that they ever sailed their ship past this monster unscathed. Um, this monster was not born for death. She was a thing of terror, terror, intractable, ferocious, and impossible to fight. Okay, so this person could have been involved with somebody who was impossible to deal with or impossible to fight or impossible... You know, here's the thing with the Queen of Swords reversed and having a third party. We have somebody who is, like like I said, very mean, very cruel, very awful, pile number one. And then here's, and then there's you that's kind of maybe afraid to make a decision about this situation or confront this situation, okay? And the clouds here are obscur obscuring the Queen of Wands or the Queen of Swords and her thought process, okay? Now, it's funny I mentioned Queen of Wands because there could be a Queen of Wands here too um, who's been, you know, just terrible, just awful. Um, or there could be a Queen of Swords who's just been terrible or awful. But somebody got stuck in a rock in a hard place here. And the whole thing about resilience while being very upset or jealous or angry but still trying to hang on to something, Okay. And um, I feel like this person, the reading is called Let Me Blow Your Mind. So I feel like this person is saying, if you could truly see who this person was in the light of day, uh, you would know what I was dealing with and you would know like what an impossible situation it is, okay? And, you know, pile number one, I'm not trying to be on this person's side. I'm not on anybody's side. I'm just reading this reading, but, you know, this is this person's message, I guess. So, you know, with the Seven of Pentacles reversed, the Seven of Pentacles in the Tarot is represented by Saturn in Taurus. And nothing hangs on harder than that, okay? Um, it's like, you know, Taurus is a fixed Earth sign. Saturn is the biggest malefic in astrology, okay? So when you put a malefic in a fixed earth sign. We got somebody who is stubbornly hanging on and doesn't wanna let go and hoping to return to a place where things were better, but it's just not happening, okay? And the Seven of Pentacles can represent a very frustrated and blocked energy, okay? But at the end of the day, pile number one, I don't really think, and you know, Saturn and Taurus is also resilience also represents a, a, a great amount of resilience all right but at the same time if it's all that it's getting somebody is pain and misery and you know emotions that are just um completely thrashed then it's okay i'm just seeing a word here on this card it looks like an r or a p like I'm seeing like R-A-O-U, R-A-U, Ra, okay, Ra, okay, it's interesting because it's almost like Rahu, um, which is the North Node, Rahu and Ketu, all right, I feel like I'm seeing the word Rahu and, um, or somebody with the name R or P, okay, and, um, Yeah, uh, I am seeing somebody's last name, I think, that starts with a P. That's like P-A-R, like Parseth, Farseth or Parseth, okay? Something like that, all right? But we see the lightning being descended upon this figure in the background, and we see the lightning right here, okay? So lightning having to do with this shocking news or a surprise, that popped in out of nowhere, okay? And left somebody in a lot of emotional turbulence wondering if they should still hang on or not. And um, yeah, for some people, it takes like a huge amount of upheaval and shock to move them from the rock that they've planted themselves on. Do you know what I'm saying, pile number one? Um, and some people wear, wear resilience like a badge of honor, even if it's not good for them. Do you know what I'm saying, pile number one? I think we all can identify with that in some way, um, especially for those of us with a lot of fixed energy. <laughs> I know I'm a Taurus. I'm not trying, you know, 
I, I'm not one to, basically I can talk about this pile number one because I'm also a fixed sign. I know how it is, all right? But sometimes, and when we see lightning, especially in astrology, we can think about um, Uranus, okay? And Uranus is in Taurus right now, and it's been by the North Node for a while, and Uranus, Taurus, Uranus with the North Node can sometimes sim um, signify a breakup, pile number one, okay? Or a change in a connection or a breakup. Um, but we have here, we have this shocking news and upheaval that changed someone's view of someone else, pile number one, okay? And someone who was being very kind to someone could have kind of flipped on a dime and said, you know, that's it, I can't do that anymore, I'm closing my energy, all right? We have Chiron and heal, very interesting, okay? So having to heal from a situation that was very deeply emotionally upsetting, Okay, and I feel like some of you here are not normally like a jealous person or you normally like understand that situations change and paths change and things don't remain the same. And I do think, you know, there was something about this situation, pile number one, that tapped upon your deepest wounds, okay? And I'm seeing card 28 here. So somebody could be around the age 28 or in their 20s. And then I'm seeing 43 here as well. Okay, there could be an age difference or somebody watching this video could be in their 40s or in their 20s. But anyway, pile number one, um, you know, talking about this person saying that, you know, we have I'm sorry with Chiron and regrets, okay? I'm sorry because at the time you were offering this person a key towards healing some things in their life that have been very disturbing to them, pile number one. But at the same time, you know, lightning can also create, I just heard burned, like somebody got burned, okay? Something was illuminated that was being hidden in the shadows and it was a surprise, sudden change um, somebody could have found out about a third party or somebody else, okay? And I mean, and really broke the intimacy between you and this person. And it's gonna take a lot to heal that, okay? It's gonna take a lot to heal that. And I'm seeing the number eight repeated here a couple times too. So somebody here could have a birthday in August or be born on the 8th. All right, or your birthday adds up to the 8th, like the 17th or the 26th, okay? But anyway, pile number one, a lot of tumultuous emotional energy where things were brought to light that were very disturbing and really could have um, affected the intimacy or the closeness that you share with this person because I do feel like with the sea serpent and kindness, again, we have sea serpents and we have... You know, it looks like she's wearing a head of snakes here. So we have the Medusa. Some of you may resonate with that Medusa energy, especially with the Queen of Swords reverse. Could be very jealous and cutting um, or that Medusa energy. Like you look at someone and they turn to stone, that type of thing. I mean, people can be like very kind and caring and loving and intimate and then turn into each other's worst enemies. Pile number one. And I'm sorry for those of you that have had the unfortunate experience of dealing with that. And I think if you knew some things about this person and about this connection and the way that they felt about you, I think it would blow your mind. Okay, this reading is called Let Me Blow Your Mind, but I think that this whole relationship blew your mind. Okay, because the lightning, when the lightning comes in, it blows everybody's mind. All right, so, you know, and just having to face all the healing and all the emotional pain and stress and tension, um, you know, really for you guys too, probably touching on some of your core childhood wounds as well, as we see this deep um, sense of emotional resilience during times of upheaval and change that you guys have probably had to forge your entire life, okay? And I feel with the sea serpent, some of you here, although you're very kind and caring and loving and forgiving, 
you also are very intuitive pile number one and I think certain things can definitely bother you at times, okay? Um, and there is something about jealousy and self-worth, I feel, popping up in this reading too, pile number one. So my heart definitely goes out to you for those of you that have experienced this. We have the Ace of Wands reversed, okay? We have the Page of Cups, interesting, all right? Um, and the Page of Cups, when I'm doing a love reading, is definitely um, a crush or an I like you or an I'm into you or, you know, if you only knew. And I feel like with the Ace of Wands, this person is saying, I can't show it and I'm incapable of showing it or I'm incapable of acting on it with the Ace of Wands reversed, but underneath it, there's feelings there for you. Page of Cups, underneath it. There's not a whole lot of action that can be taken and there's not a whole lot that can be done, um, but there's still feelings. And the Page of Cups with the Sea Serpent and all the water we've been talking about and Poseidon and you know, the monsters of the sea. It's very interesting that the Page of Cups came up, okay? It's that very, um, and the Page of Cups, sometimes people assume in the tarot, like the Page of Cups doesn't have deep feelings or the Page of Cups is like childish with feelings, but that's not actually true, pile number one. Uh, Ryder Waite Smith, which, what, which is what a lot of, um, you know, tarot decks are based off, off of ether, uh, art, sorry, Arthur Edward Waite, okay? And, um, you know, the traditionally in tarot, the pages are called princesses. And a lot of them are, when you look at the drawings of them in other decks are very fierce, okay? So don't think like with the Page of Cups, it's some watered down childish version of feelings. I do think that this person has feelings. I do think that they're there. Um, I do think that they're passionate. Um, I just, with the Ace of Wands reversed, there's not a whole lot that can be done. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit, pile number one. Oh, my goodness. The Three of Swords reversed, okay? So this person is trying to act like their heart isn't broken. Someone is trying to act like their heart isn't broken and if they, and they don't have feelings, um but they do, okay? And the Ace of Wands reverse can also be where we're directing our fire and our inspiration and our desire at the things that we really don't want and we're trying to tell ourselves that it's okay, but it's really not, all right? And the Three of Swords reversed is, is a very painful place to be. It's even worse than the Three of Swords upright. And, um, it's where we're kind of like, it's five, five, five on my clock right now, pile number one. It's where we're trapped in deep emotional pain and um, we really don't wanna deal with it. We keep denying what's happening. And so instead um, we put our passion or we put our emotions into things that we know we really don't want, okay? So this person's been real messed up. Let me just tell you, they've been real messed up. now. I don't know if that makes you feel any better. I don't know if that makes you, you know, I don't know. Cause I think some of you in this pile have probably cried some tears over this connection. Um, and wondered like what you did wrong. Okay. But it's nothing you did wrong. Pile number one. I really don't. I think you've been incredibly, I mean, maybe sometimes you've been jealous because your intuition has been telling you something is going on. Okay. And the Three of Swords with the third party is very interested. <laughs> very interested. Is very interesting. All right. That's another really interesting thing. All right. So it's like somebody had to put an end to a third party situation or call a spade a spade. Um, if, if you were the third person, pile number one, and they had to end it with you, I don't really think they wanted to. Okay. I don't really think that's how they feel. Um, but pile number one, the hard part about this reading is that there's a lot of, uh, like toxic behavior going on. Okay. So this person is saying, even in the, even in, even in their heartbreak and even in themselves trying to force themselves to move forward, they still have feelings. Okay. 
and they still get jealous. So for those of you um, that have been, you know, talking to someone else or trying to move on with your life and this person knows it, they, you know, if they did know it or they could know it, all right, it would make them very jealous. What's that song? Um, I, like, I still get jealous, okay? Somebody sings it in a really uh, high-pitched voice, so I'm not going to do it. But yeah, something about... Um, I still get jealous, okay? And with the Queen of Swords reverse, not really wanting to talk about their feelings or not really wanting to deal with their feelings, but still having them, okay? And just wanting to forget that a situation even existed or that they got their heart broken. And so they're gonna try to entertain whatever situations, but it's not, I mean, it's not going anywhere with the Ace of Wands reversed, you know? It's not, um, if this person gets very obsessed and love obsessed, it's not really working, pile number one, all right? And I hope you're not blaming yourself for anything here, okay? Because, you know, just keep, I think the best thing for you, pile number one, is to keep your mind clear, okay? To keep your mind clear and don't let your feelings overtake you. Do you know what I'm saying? Keep your head clear. We need this Queen of Swords upright, okay? We need good boundaries. We need good authority and boundaries, all right? We need to speak our truth here and stop blaming ourselves for what happened, okay? So pile number one, that is what I am getting for you, my loves. That is a very, that's a pretty intense reading, okay? Still, some of you here really did need a reading. And um, I'm sorry, I can't keep going in the time that we have. But if you'd like to go deeper with me, you can always book a personal reading with me. And there's details in the description box below for how to do that. If you'd like a natal chart reading with me, there is also a way to book that uh, via my astrology website in the description box below. So take care, pile number one. Let's move on to pile number two, okay? do it. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the purple tea light and today's reading is called Let Me Blow Your Mind, okay? And we're going to find out what is on their mind as it relates to you. Beautiful pile number two, okay? I don't know why I just got something about Carnival or Carnival, Brazil. I know Carnival. Is it, I don't think it's this time of year though, but maybe some of you always wanted to go or you like South America or you like Brazil, but anyway, I'm just getting something like that, okay? Maybe you went to one of those really cool, uh, what are those restaurants called where they come around with all the meat and you can eat like a whole bunch of meat and they bring you different food. And it's like, it's like a Brazilian steakhouse or something. Maybe some of you went there. I don't know why I'm getting that right now, pile number two. But anyway, my loves, <laughs> okay. I just heard, don't forget your jacket. Almost like, you know, your mom or your grandma telling you, don't forget your jacket, okay. <laughs> pile number two. I feel like you guys are like, ugh. Some of you could have been a little frustrated. I feel like somebody lost an earring or it's like, oh, why did I have to lose that? Or maybe you just lost something or you lost an uh, earring or something that someone gave you and you're like, God, I'm always losing everything. Okay, pile number two. So it's okay, my darlings. We've been going through a Mercury retrograde. It's almost over. Hang in there, loves, okay? Let's go ahead, let's go ahead for my pile number twos. Let's do it. Spirits, angels, and guides, let me blow your mind. Can you show me for the person that pile number two came here for? Can you tell me? Spirit, can you tell me? Okay, I keep seeing a bunch of cards pop up, but we gotta be more organized, don't we? Pile number two. Maybe that's a New Year's goal for you guys. I'm gonna be more organized, Natalie, okay? Judgment reversed is on the bottom of the deck. And to me, that just says, I don't wanna waste my time anymore. I don't, you know, life doesn't last forever. I can't keep avoiding what I want to do and the things how I wanna live my life. 
And so, you know, I feel like this year you guys are like, I'm getting serious about my time and like not wasting my time on things that are never going to happen. Okay, pile number two. So I like that for you guys, but you know, judgment reverse could also be, you know, sometimes could also be sometimes not wanting. I think sometimes you can go into the intention of that, but then, you know, we fall back into our old ways or we don't really follow through, okay? So just keep keep working on things. Pile number two, keep on working. All right, my loves, let's see what else is going on here. Let me blow your mind for my pile number twos. We have guides. Ooh, your spirit guides are coming through with a message. Pile number two, and there could be three of them. There's three lines on here, and... Um, this kind of reminds me of the Aquarius symbol. We are in Aquarius season right now. For those of you that have Aquarius in your chart, listen up. We have palm tree, stability, security, permanence, growth, okay? Endurance and flexibility. Wow, okay. Palm trees. We have twin flame, me oh my. Pile number two, what have you got going on over there? Nostalgia, yes, that makes so much sense with judgment reversed. Thinking about a situation that you let go of from a long time ago or somebody from your past, thinking about you, pile number two. Thinking about the beautiful times and the beautiful moments that you shared. This person thinking about those times. Ooh, chemistry, okay now. This person, pile number two, really like thinking about you and what's on your mind and thinking about some of you could have had a very steamy night with this person or they could have had a very sexy dream about you. Maybe some of you recently had a sexy dream about this person. This person is thinking about the last time that they saw you. Okay, and it could be from the night before, you know, you were over at someone's house, you, you know, had some naughty, nasty time with them and, you know, they're sitting here thinking about it. Or you saw them out at an event or you saw them at the store or wherever. This person is thinking about the last time they saw you, pile number two, and um, look at her earrings. She has two earrings here. And they're these red earrings and they're very pretty, okay? But you guys looking good in earrings. I was talking about earrings anyway in the beginning. Um, and she has a red flower in her hair. And I was talking about Brazil too. And she looks very uh, like, you know, like she's probably, she looks like she's dressed up and coming from an event or coming from some place, uh, like with the red lipstick and everything. Very pretty, okay? Very... I feel some of you in pile number two, you may have very sexy shoulders or you like wearing things off the shoulder or somebody told you you look good with wearing something off the shoulder, okay? Um, but I feel some of you could have had a very spicy night with a particular individual and somebody just keeps kind of reliving the moment. <laughs> They're reliving the moment, pile number two. Somebody's on. Somebody's got you on their mind, pile number two. Ooh, the horse. Okay. We could have Sagittarians up in this pile for sure. Um, but talking about, you know, it's interesting with the horse spirit. Because horse is... Um, when I think of horse, I think of Sagittarius and I think of like freedom and I think of, you know, wildness, but in a good way, in a good way, not like in a crazy weird way, but in a good way. But also in this deck, the horse is represented by the element of earth. Okay. So somebody who really, I feel like somebody who really digs your style, pile number two, like you guys could be um, all over the place at times or have a lot going on or be traveling a lot or um, like, you know, your hair is messy a lot or you just got a lot going on, okay? Maybe sometimes you feel kind of frazzled, but you always seem to make time for the people that you love and care about, okay? You always seem to do that. And um, 
I think this person is noticing this about you. I feel like they're also saying that you're very fun. Okay, and with guides here too, this person kind of feeling, we have lucky number seven with guides. Okay, so this person feeling pretty lucky since they met you, feeling pretty like, you know, feeling pretty guided towards you, feeling like an impulse to kind of be around you. Maybe some of them want to travel with you or go different places, but hey now, we have here compassion. Wow. Yeah, like I was talking about, you know, like this person, I feel like this person really admires you, pile number two. Like they're just saying, wow, you know, like some of you here could be a guide for other people. Um, some of you could work in tourism or you could like be a literal guide for people. You could work in tourism, also teachers. Um, also like, you know, um, what's the word? I, I can't think of it right now when people, uh, travel agents, things like that. Okay. But we have lucky on here. So this person's like, you know, something guided, guided them to you and they might not be exactly sure what it is, but you know, it's kind of cool. Look at all the chemistry. Okay. Ooh, we have a new biz and respect. Anubis and respect. Nice. Pile number two. This person saying that, you know, they got respect for you. They got respect for who you are in the world and what you do. And I feel like sometimes maybe with this judgment reverse, you guys like doubt yourselves or you think you're not going anywhere in life or you think that you're not doing that great of a job or you have a tendency to kind of like downplay the things you're doing. Um, yeah, I'm also just seeing the butts. I got to say, pile number two, baby got back. All right. <laughs> cute, cute. All right. But yeah, this person also with judgment reverse because judgment is the spirit of primal fire. So with judgment reverse, we could have somebody who's a little bit shy um, or maybe at times this you make this person feel a little bit shy pile number two or maybe they make you feel a little bit shy okay but very interesting we have here third house and communication wow okay here's another thing i feel like this person wants to get down and and be free with you and get naughty with you and and enjoy but i also feel like they don't want to be like disrespectful if it's the wrong timing or you know i i feel like this person really does have a strong fire towards you but they're like you know well should i you know is it the right time is it the right moment um i don't want to make the wrong move um anubis energy is also very serious like i've worked with his energy before as an egyptian deity and um, i did a reading on my other channel light of ascension tarot uh, regarding Anubis and um, yeah he's a very serious deity and so and it's not like somebody who's like taking things lightly or like being frivolous you know so judgment also is a very serious card it's it's a plutonic card but it's also like if it's reversed it's like well I don't want to really scare pile number two away but I really got some burning desires going on here but I don't really want to scare pile number two away. So I'm going to kind of keep those under wraps. Okay. Um, but this person really wanting to get free with you with this horse and, um, you know, wanting to communicate to you respect here. It actually says respect on here that they admire you or they respect you and they admire the way that you show compassion to others and you have a big heart. I'm also getting people who could be traveling nurses or like traveling um, medical people who do something or have to travel for work a lot. Okay, but this person's like, you know, I, I got nothing but respect for pile number two, okay? Got nothing but love for you, baby. Um, <laughs> I just keep thinking of that Tupac song. Um, I ain't mad at you. I got nothing or whatever that song is. I got nothing but respect or that type of thing. But anyway, um, I feel like this person is saying like, 
you know, they're wanting to like present themselves well in a very positive way, but underneath it, they're like, come here, come here, come here. Okay, and I'm seeing the letter L. I'm seeing um, S-N-E. I'm also seeing Sue, S-U-E. Okay, Sue. Uh, maybe someone here has a parent whose name is Sue or someone's goes by Sue. We have 1985. Okay, I'm seeing um, 1985. All right. Um, I'm seeing an H. I'm also seeing N-E for Nebraska, okay? And I'm seeing the letter 08. I'm also seeing um, 82 for 1982, okay? 1982, 1985. Uh, people could be around that age. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like somebody here could also, maybe somebody here likes to play like game night or have game nights or play like Jenga or something like that. I don't know. Pile number two. Somebody here is over trying to, over here trying to get jiggy with it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm using all these 90s slang or 2000s slangs or whatever, but yeah, somebody's over here trying to get jiggy with it. Third house, communication, you know, wanting to tell you, hey, I like you. Hey, I'm India. Hey, like, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you, trying to get to know you. And um, finds like, finds you very charming, pile number two. So, wow, pile number two. I don't know if you were expecting all this or if this is really you know, but <laughs> what you were expecting, but I feel like this person with the third house in communication, you know, they want to talk. They want to be able to say how they're feeling with you. I also feel like if you look at this person a certain way when they're kissing you or they go in to kiss you, I feel like it drives this person crazy, wild, okay? Um, some people will kiss with their eyes closed, some will open, it's just, it's interesting. Maybe you two had a conversation about that or you delved into talking about communication between, you know, between lovers and how that is and how chemistry is just natural. Like you can have a lot of chemistry and communication. Some people have a lot of physical chemistry but d can't talk to someone or they don't have good intellectual conversations. I, I'm glad the third house is here because I feel like this person is like wanting to pick your brain or wanting to have a conversation, wanting to chit chat, okay? Um, I just heard the word Daisy, so maybe somebody has a pet named Daisy or that's a nickname for someone. Um, I'm also seeing blue flowers here too, okay? But this person really, you know, wanting to talk, they wanna talk about your guys' mind-blowing chemistry and the thoughts that are kind of going through their head over and over and over. All right, so interesting. Pile number two. Oh, we have the Queen of Wands. Dang, pile number two. Okay, now we have the King of Pentacles reverse. I'm shy, okay? <laughs> and oh no, pile number two this person really doesn't want to blow it. Okay. And you know, they're thinking you're just gorgeous. Okay. Uh, queen of wands, you got it going on. You're super attractive. You're super fun. You know, you're, I feel like this person is like, why would pile number two date me? You know, like they may get kind of down on themselves at times, pile number two. I feel like this person has a lot to offer someone, but I also feel like this person's like, dang, I screwed it up, you know? Like, I should have said something, okay? I was a little afraid to, judgment reversed, okay? I was, I was a little scared, all right? I was feeling a little inhibited. I was feeling like I couldn't kind of like say too much, okay? Also, this person may have been like really busy with work or really busy with responsibilities. Um, I feel like they're like, I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you because I'm not. But I also feel like this person's like, geez, I hope I didn't, um, you know. And I also feel like they hope that you don't shoot them down, okay? 
because you're like a very, uh, you know, I think this person is used to people who are like, not as like sexy or not as flamboyant or not as, you know, like, like proudly in charge of their sexuality and kind of like owning who they are and who they are as a woman or a man in this world. Okay. Like very much like a thriving self-confidence. This person sees you as having a very thriving self-confidence. Now, I don't know if you feel that all the time or if at times you feel like you are intimidating towards, you know, towards a lover or towards someone that likes you. But I mean, I do think with the King of Pentacles, it's like this person has a lot to offer, but they're like, you know, they're like, oh boy, you know, like they're embarrassed, I feel here, pile number two, because they could have like been like, did I really like, you know, did I really let pile number two know? Or does pile number two think I'm a flake? Does pile number two like have a very low opinion of me? Okay. Um, and I do feel like this person could have gone through an experience such as a uh, divorce, a breakup or something like that, that really um, shattered them or shattered their self-confidence or made them like not really believe in themselves. Okay, I do feel like this person sees you as a very spiritual person or creative person. They might not feel like they have a whole lot to offer you because of that. Or um, they may also feel that they should be farther ahead in their life, that they should have more money, that they should have, you know, more to offer pile number two. Okay, um, and they may get very like self-conscious about that. Okay, but I mean, I mean, I do feel like this person has a lot to offer, okay? But I feel like they're kind of weighed down right now. And But I feel like a lot of it is in their head, like just kind of like psyching themselves out and telling themselves, oh no, oh no, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly, I, I don't know, I couldn't possibly. And when I talked about judgment reversed and like feeling kind of shy and maybe some of you are like, you know, when is this dude going to approach me or when is this gal going to approach me or like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> and, um, cause maybe you guys are used to people that are a little bit more like forthright or a little bit more like on it. Okay. But I kind of feel like, and you guys may be getting impatient over here as the queen of wands, you know, getting a little impatient all right, with with the with this person, because I mean, people can only stare at their own navel for so long. There's only so much navel gazing we can do in life. Like sometimes we just have to get on with the show, you know, pile number two. And um, this person, I do think they need to, um, you know, I mean, they don't want to be disrespectful and they don't want to be, so they're being a little bit, timid I feel like okay I just saw the eight of wands okay and the lovers is on the bottom of the deck right here so I feel like things are gonna shift and speed up I feel like this isn't you know all that you're gonna see from this person pile number two if you've been wondering I mean you're obviously on their mind and with this ten of swords I feel like you're on their mind a little bit too much they could be a little bit like you know um overwhelmed by like the thoughts or just thinking, going back and forth in their own head. Um, you know, I can see them kind of shaking their head and putting their hand on their forehead, like, oh my God, you know? Um, but I mean, pile number two, I mean, <laughs> I feel like you and this person, I do feel like you and this person could be a match. I just think that this person needs to pull themselves out of whatever it is that they've been in, okay? And if for those of you that have been talking to someone who recently lost their job or somebody who, you know, like something happened that was embarrassing to them in some way or they, they took some type of loss, okay? And it really set them back. I mean, there may be some type of thing where you need to be a little bit patient here, but I do feel like, yeah, there's the Knight of Pentacles, okay? 
So I think it's this person has to come up with a plan. With the Ten of Swords, we feel so overwhelmed. Like we can't even think anymore. We can't even use our minds anymore. It's like too much. Okay. And um, this person's like making too big of a deal. They need to just like, you know, settle it down. Okay. And you guys may be wondering, well, what can I do? What can I do? You know, Eight of Wands on the bottom deck. What can I do, Natalie? What can I do? What can I do? I would say just, you know, <clears throat> continue to be your fabulous self, pile number two. And if this person can get it together and get their life together and get things together, um, I feel like they are with the third house in communication. I feel like they are going to talk to you. I mean, when you have that good a chemistry or that much sexual attraction, I, I feel like it's like, you know, mm, like what, you know, what are they going to do? Hide out forever? What are they going to do? Bury their head in the sand forever? Like they're going to have to say something and I think they know it. Okay, so I wouldn't push the issue pile number two. I would just hold back and see, um, you know, what happens. Now, if you've been holding back for a really long time and it's like, yeah, you know, I am not waiting anymore. I understand that too as well, pile number two. It's your life, right? And you're in the driver's seat and you call the shots and you make the decisions, okay? So, I mean, some of you may just be like, yeah, no thanks, like, if somebody isn't having it together, like, you know, they can't just bumble their way towards me and expect that it'll work. Like, get it together. Straighten your collar. Man up. Woman up. You know? <laughs> I just said bumble. So maybe some of you have been on bumble or you've been trying to date people, but everyone's a hot mess. Okay? Just keep being your fabulous self, pile number two. You don't have anything to prove to anyone, and I think you're certainly on this person's mind. Okay, my loves, and for those of you that would like to go deeper into your into a reading, you can book a personal reading with me, and there's information in my description box below for how to do that. And for those of you that would like to work with me even further, I do natal chart consult consultations, natal chart readings as well, and there's details below in the description box for how to book a natal chart reading with me, okay? I've just opened up some... Um, slots in February. I've opened up a few and if you go to my website Lilith Rising Astrology you will find how to book. Okay so let's go ahead and move into pile number three. Okay let's do it. Pile number three welcome to your reading. You chose the lime green tea light. Let's go ahead and get into your reading, my darlings, okay? And I don't know why I'm just getting that song by Cake. I want a girl with a um, short dress and a long jacket, okay? Maybe some of you were wearing a short dress with a long jacket. I feel like some of you could have some really like funky styles in this pile or really fresh styles or cute styles going on, pile number three, okay? I feel like you guys could probably pull off some styles maybe other people couldn't, like combat boots with a dress or something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, drop us a line below of, of how to pull that off, pile number three, if you know <laughs> if you know how, how. Share the wealth with everyone else, okay? Let's see what else. Let's see what else for pile number three. Okay. Hmm. I just heard I'm kind of rebellious, but I'm also cute. Okay, pile number three. I like it. I like it. You're filling me in on your style and the way you are. Let's see. Anything else here? Anything else for channeled messages before we get into the reading, please? Anything else? Anything else? Okay, I just got the word cotton ball, so maybe you guys are... Use cotton balls a lot with your makeup or getting ready or you're like, yeah, I got cotton balls in my ears. I can't hear anything today for whatever reason. All right. Also, some people, I feel like maybe some people here like to wear, um, some people do wear those um, earplugs in their ears, like when they're sleeping at night or when they're working because they need, they need to minimize distractions. Some people even wear them when they go to concerts as well, pile number three. But anyway, I just got to tell you what I'm getting. So 
Let's go ahead and get into it and find out. Let me blow your mind for my pile number threes. Let me blow your mind. What is, what is this person's, there we go, thoughts and feelers. Okay, two of pentacles reversed on the bottom of the deck. All right, and um, <laughs> with the two, okay, so the two of pentacles in the tarot is the Lord of Harmonious Change, and with the two of pentacles reversed, we can say it's been a bumpy ride, okay, and maybe it's been, you know, since Sagittarius season or Capricorn season or for the last couple of months, it's been kind of a bumpy ride. We do have the two of pentacles, so it could be the last two months. Um, and you guys are looking to kind of smooth things out, okay? Um, yeah, sometimes things happen, right? Yep, there's the five of pentacles. Money situations could have been a little bit bumpy these last couple of months, pile number two, um, or just health situations. One day it's up, one day it's down, okay? Or the health of someone you care about, Um yeah, just things being a little bit bumpy, like one minute you think that you're going along just fine, and then the next minute it's like, oh my God, like what did I spend again? How much money did I spend? Or, you know, gee, I really need to kind of get that under control, okay? So pile number three, you're in good company. It's the beginning of the year, and um, we've just had a Mercury retrograde in Capricorn. It's just um, ending here in the next couple of days. I mean, Mercury will be in his shadow phase for several weeks after, but I mean, it has been bumpy, a bit bumpy. So if you've noticed that, then, you know, turbulence, we got a little bit of turbulence, pile number three, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, the two of pentacles isn't um, the worst as far as bumpy rides or turbulence is concerned. So let's go ahead and see. We're gonna look at Oracle cards first, pile number three. We have focus, yeah, right? Focus, focus. This person's like, focus, focus, focus. We have healthy choices. Wow, pile number three. I mean, these two cards are first out of the gate, I feel like are for you, honestly. And I don't think we've gotten into this person's thoughts yet, okay? I think we're in your thoughts right now. And your thoughts might have been very ADD the last couple of months. And I'm not, you know, trying to be whatever about that. I know how difficult that can be. I don't have it, but I, I definitely have friends that have it. But just talking about focusing on making healthy choices for yourself, especially in these next couple of months, because I feel like maybe the last couple of months it's been hard to focus um, and maybe things that weren't even your fault, just situations that you were trying to deal with um, and adjustments that you were trying to make and that happened very quickly or suddenly and it, you had to kind of regain your footing, okay? But now, like, let's clear the chessboard, pile number three, and let's focus on making some healthy choices, okay? So making healthy choices and love in life, self-love, self-care and being happier. Ah, I like that. You guys are like, I already am focusing on my self-care and being happier and focusing on me. Perfect. Ooh, a new beginning in love. Pile number three, yearning, yearning for a new beginning and for better days. Okay. And waiting. Wow. Pile number three. Okay, so, you know, I feel you and this person are in the same place in life, okay? And I feel this is your energy because I'm also just getting your energy, pile number three, which sometimes happens in readings when your guides hijack the readings or things come out and it's like, I'm sorry, you know, this is supposed to be about, you know, Tom, Dick, or Harry, or whoever it is, but, you know, <laughs> the more important message is coming through for you, okay? But I also feel like some of you could have met someone where, you know, you haven't really been able to focus on your love life much before because there was, you know, health issues or money issues or just ups and downs, family issues. Same thing with this person. They could have been dealing uh, with, you know, family issues, money issues, but look what happens when you let go, when that stuff passes. We have the eight of wands and the 10 of pentacles, the ace of pentacles. Wow. The fool, a new beginning, 
burning off the old. You guys are ripe and ready for a new beginning. And I also feel like this person is wanting that new beginning too. Okay. And for some of you, I feel like this is a fresh thing. It's not like, let's go back to the X and have a new beginning. Okay. I'm not getting that. I'm getting more that you're in a place in your life where you're looking for a new beginning. And this person is also in a place in their life, like, you know, yearning and wanting and wanting someone in their life where they can have a new beginning. And, you know, this person could have picked people in the past that, you know, brought them down or just added more, you know, stress to their life or, you know, you could have picked people like that pile number three. But the point is, you are where you are now. And this person also is where they are now, okay? And I kind of like it. And I think it's okay to be yearning and waiting a little bit because it builds up anticipation for, you know, something cool to happen. Now, I also think with the two of pentacles reversed, there could have been a change in plans. There could have been like, you know, something that came up or like, you know, this person had to cancel a plan or you had to cancel a plan um, because a work thing came up or because, you know, a relative needed help with something or something happened with the kids or, you know, all the things in life, right? The things that aren't the most fun for your love life. But but anyway, I feel like after, you know, going through that kind of difficult hurdle, then things become so much easier. It's like you find time to see each other. You find time to talk. You find time to go do things, okay? Um, and things clear up is what I'm getting, okay? So this person, like, yearning and waiting and looking um, to focus on you know, being with someone who's like healthy and has their life together. So pile number three, is that you? We have crocodile, okay? Crocodile tears, Oh, You know, like people coming, I don't even wanna talk about people coming back crying crocodile tears because they, maybe some of you have had that. People coming back, oh, I changed, oh, I'm better. They're crocodile tears and you're like, focus, focus, focus. I can't, you know, go back to, I mean, sometimes it's, it's, um, what's the word tempting, you know what I mean? Um, but I also just feel like, you know, temptations be damned onward pile number three. Okay. And, um, crocodile represents water energy. It's also like, you know, it looks like somebody here is like, you know, salivating a lot or wanting to devour. Crocodile is like a very devouring kind of a thing, okay? So this person like trying to stay focused on their work or stay focused on, you know, what they, you know, maybe this person's going to the gym or they're trying to save money. They're trying to do good things for themselves, pile number three, but I think underneath there lies a person who is, you know, waiting for the right moment, like devouring, yearning, waiting, okay, to kind of like, you know, put, get their teeth into you, pile number three. Maybe this person's like biting or something like that. I don't know. Pile number three will continue. We have a harmony. Wow. Okay. I feel like this person is saying, I'm not going to let my fears, my anxieties, or my need to control things get in the way. I am going to try to relate to somebody who um, has like a really nice, mature, harmonious personality. I also think pile number three, this person could have had a bad relationship with women. Crocodiles represent like the untamed feminine. And also, in unfortunately, in some cases, the toxic feminine. Okay, this person could have had a very challenging mother uh, figure in their life. Okay, or just had women in their life who were very like challenging, who didn't bring out the good side of them. All right. And um, I just feel like this person isn't wanting to be like that. I feel like they want to experience relationships that, you know, are more harmonious where they don't have to worry about what the other person is doing, where they don't have to like obsess on things emotionally, where they, where they connect with somebody who's like very, who doesn't have an agenda. You know what I'm saying? Like some people, they just have an agenda in relationships. 
like their own selfish agenda. Okay. So this person really like saying they've been with people in the past who've had, you know, selfish agendas and things like that. They're wanting to focus on choosing a better woman for themselves or a better man for themselves. You know, whoever you are watching this reading pile number three, and they believe it'll bring them better, you know, harmony in their life. So I like that. We have shadow and depth. Wow, we are going to take a look at that, okay? So even in the new beginning, underneath it, there could still be um, some shadows and some misgivings and some things, but I also am just getting like this phoenix energy, this like very strong, powerful rising to the surface, okay? And, you know, new beginnings are oftentimes like very, uh, you know, crisp and clean and refreshing and everything. But, you know, sometimes we're still trying to work out things of the past underneath that. And we still have, um, you know, we still may have a bone to pick or we may still have a little chip here or there. Or we may still have some concerns, okay? And that happens to a lot of people, you know. And I don't think it's that odd. I think, you know, when you meet someone, it's a brand new clean slate, but you, your psyche has still like gone through everything you've gone through, okay? So I do think this person could have gone through a lot uh, in relationships. I also think sometimes people take their crap from their old relationship into their new relationship. I think this person is aware of that. I don't really feel that they wanna do that, okay? But you know, it's important to remember like, you know, new beginnings are wonderful and it is amazing, but there's still always things to be worked out. Now, ooh, we have Gemini and cross-pollinate. Okay, so this person really anxious, yearning, maybe even a little anxious, pile number three, uh, to talk to you, okay? Not wanting to seem overly, you know, like too much or whatever. But I also just feel like, you know, I feel like this person really likes the way that you smell. Um, and, you know, I mean, they're, they kind of just want to like, some people are very turned on by smell too, pile number three. I feel this person could be, they like your perfume or your cologne or whatever you got going on. Okay. And I feel like when they're around you and talking to you, I feel like it's, I feel like sometimes they get a little nervous because they're like thinking multiple things all at one time. Um, and they're like excited because they've been waiting and yearning to talk to you. Okay. Um, and I do feel like this person, they want to have healthy relationships underneath that. They may be uh, still worried about things. And that happens, you know, and sometimes when people, when they've been through bad things and they're getting to know new people, there's this whole question, like, is this person going to treat me badly? Is this going to go wrong? Okay. Um, but I do feel like with this Gemini is very mercurial and, you know, somebody here could be a Gemini as well, but I also just feel like somebody like this person's getting kind of caught up in the details and maybe just needs to, um, because I also feel like they can get caught up in the details at times and sometimes they may get a little bit clingy, okay? But I feel like they don't really wanna do that. I'm also seeing the letter M here for those of you, first name, last name, middle name, okay? But I also, you know, Gemini, um, all the air signs are like masculine signs, okay? Masculine active signs. And I feel like this person really like wants to talk and show interest and share things with you, okay? I feel like sometimes though their nerves maybe get the best of them and they aren't the most clear-headed at times when they're talking, okay? Um, but, you know, <laughs> they still wanna talk, okay? They're still trying to talk. I'm also seeing somebody who could do something analytical for a living, like somebody who does spreadsheets, somebody who does math, somebody who, you know, like reviews things that are very detailed. I'm seeing somebody who does, could work in tech, like somebody who does a lot of detailed analytical work, who has a very, you know, busy mind, okay? We see two Bs on here, two busy Bs. And um, 
You know, this person really wanting to talk to you though, I feel, pile number three. And we see a three on this Gemini card, so that's more three, all right? I just wanna read this shadow card a little bit here too to see if we can get a little bit more idea of what this person um, is going on, okay? So we have shadow, seek balance. You are not complete if you ignore the more hidden parts of yourself, okay? And for you guys too, this is for you as well, pile number three. Have compassion and curiosity, right? Uh, Gemini, shadow, have compassion and curiosity about your shadow side. Be curious about all the parts of yourself. Ignore your shadow side at your own peril. Make friends with your shadow as it has much to teach you, okay? So, I mean, the shadow side here with the crocodile could be jealous, clinging, needing con to control, okay? And sometimes we don't really want to, this person may have some of that too, but it may come up from anxiety. Maybe you do as well, pile number three, okay? But we're talking about duality with depth and um, depth and shallowness, darkness and light. I am a part of you. Ignore me at your peril. I could be making of you. I could be the making of you, yet I am seen as the devil. The light shines hard upon us and cast and, and, and a shadow we cast, not to be ignored, but to be explored till the last, okay? The psychoanalysis Carl Jung said, introduced the modern concept of shadow to refer to the hidden or repressed aspects of ourselves. Oftentimes we deny these and we don't integrate them because they shame us or make us seem less than perfect. Yeah, and I do think this person could be analytical. I do think they wanna focus on healthy choices. I do think they wanna focus on better decisions in their life, you know, and they may wanna be like doing things perfectly, but so we can't ignore the shadow, right? Um, unconscious patterns are made conscious by purposely seeking them out and observing how they play out in our everyday lives. Um, to make friends with the hidden part of ourselves that we often repress or are afraid to reveal makes us whole, okay? So this person, you know, wanting to talk to you and wanting to get to know you on a deeper level, waiting to share things with you, waiting to get to know you on a deeper level, okay? And um, this person is a thinker, I feel, pile number three. Like, they think about the past and they think about the things that have happened, but more than anything, they wanna focus on a brighter future, okay? And um, I feel like they wanna talk to you, okay? Like they wanna see, they wanna talk to you and get to know you more. They're yearning to understand your story and understand more of who you are, pile number three, okay? And um, I feel like you guys are similar. Like you want a fresh new beginning. You want to focus on the positive things. You want to take good care of yourself. You want to uh, treat your body well, eat good foods, um, make positive decisions so that you can live in harmony, okay? And I get it, you know, after a period of being drugged through the mud, like we all need that period to come out to the light, okay? But also, I just think, you know, we can't, we got to also... Um, like we shouldn't just be flirting and going from one relationship to the next in order to kind of ignore our shadow or ignore our shadow material. Now, Gemini energy can definitely be a flirt, okay? But I also feel like this person's, they're not like an insane flirt though. That's not what I'm getting, pile number three. I feel like this person's more analytical or they're more driven to explore their feelings like mentally, okay? They may have a tendency to intellectualize, intellectualize their emotions, okay? You guys might kind of be a flirt or starting over with new beginnings in your life at times, all right? Um, but yeah, we just don't wanna like not process what's happened underneath it is what I'm getting. All right, my beautiful pile number threes, even if it is a hot mess, you know, we're in a hot mess together. We have the nine of cups reversed, we, oh, we have the High Priestess reversed, okay? And we have the Six of Swords, okay. So this person has been in a phase in their life where they haven't really been happy. And I think in the past, they've ran from the deeper sides of life. The High Priestess definitely can be the shadow hidden depths, okay? The High Priestess represents the moon in the tarot and of course the sun is the light and the moon is the shadow all right the moon receives her light from the sun 
So there's this whole situation of, I feel like sometimes this person may be at times a little bit uncomfortable uh, with revealing aspects of themselves, but I also feel like if they don't reveal themselves, they're not going to be happy. Okay. And I feel like in the past, um, they were in relationships where they were not happy. They were in relationships where they felt like they couldn't really show their emotions or they couldn't show their shadow or their deeper sides. And I feel like, you know, they missed out on intimacy. They missed out on closeness. They missed out on, and this person may be heavily into logic, okay? Because the Six of Swords in the Tarot is represented by Mercury and Aquarius. Okay, Mercury does very well in Aquarius. It's a very smart combination, very smart analytical combination. And I've been talking about that, okay? Um, I feel like this person just doesn't wanna make decisions from a shadowy place where they don't, where they're making decisions that don't really make them happy. Um, and they're confused. Like, I feel this person could have made bad decisions about love before just based on emotion, or based on the moment, not really thinking about like, am I compatible with this person? Um, I also feel like this person in the past could have ignored problems in relationships or ignored how they were even feeling in, a, in relationships or even denied to themselves and said, I'm happy when they're really not happy. Okay, so this person is trying to, um, I also feel like this person could have been with a partner who was not mentally well. That's something else I'm getting, pile number three. And I'm not, you know, obviously, I'm not trying to make any comments on that. We've all had times in our lives when we haven't been mentally well. Certainly the last three years of our lives have been tough and a lot of people haven't been happy or mentally well, um, you know, and, and haven't felt comfortable talking about it or sharing it, okay? But I also feel like this person now knows that if they really want to connect with people and if they really want to, um, you know, experience more like freedom and connection and communication, that they're going to have to get their hands dirty a little bit, okay? But I also feel like being with somebody who's like very unhappy all the time and doesn't really share what's going on and like changes their moods all the time. I feel like this is very overwhelming for this person. Pile number three, okay? This is like, and this person could have had a mother that was like that, that was like very unhappy, made them feel guilty all the time, dragged on their energy, okay? This person may get very overwhelmed when that happens, all right? And I talked about, you know, this person being with people in the past, um, who, you know, I feel like this person could have been with people who had like major like anxious attachment or something, but expressed it in a way that made this person like not really want to be around it. The, the irony is pile number three, I feel this person also has some anxious attachment in them too. They just want to, uh, sometimes they haven't wanted to look at that or avoid that, okay? And that's where I'm getting the shadow from here. Now, I just completely, I feel like I just completely gave you a complete psychological profile of this person, pile number three, like we went deep into the psyche there, okay? Um, but with the six of swords, I do feel like this person is trying to make smart, proactive decisions where they don't stay stuck in deeply unsatisfying relationships. I also feel like this person could have been in relationships where their sexual needs weren't being met, um, you know, where they were not able to give enough emotionally to a person who just like kind of bled their emotions dry or just were like very much, um, you know, because I mean, it's okay to need your partner and, and need them emotionally and need to be a part of that, but it's not okay to like guilt your partner and hang everything on them and you know what I mean it's not okay to do that right and I feel like this person is like much more um able to, and I feel like sometimes because 
I feel like this person does want to take care of people, especially for my women here watching for a guy. I feel like this man does want to take care. You know, um, this person could have dated somebody that had a child, etc. I do think they feel bad, um, especially like when women get the short end of the stick or things like that. Okay. But I also feel like at times they may feel like this has been preyed on. Okay. And instead of focusing on the things that happened in the past that were very emotionally unsettling and made them very unhappy, I feel like this person has resolved to go towards situations that are more calm, like people that are more serene, people that are more balanced, people that are more focused, okay? And you just let me know where you're at in that equation, pile number three, okay? Are you that person? All right. And I feel like there may be this, in between you and this person, there may be this aversion to drama, or you may not want to show this person any of your drama side because you know that's how they feel and what they've been through. But I also think like emotional honesty is very important too. And um, we don't want to start out. I mean, in the beginning, we don't want things to be so serious that they're just like, it's like way too much intimacy right away. I mean, we want to, you know, watch out for that, but because that's a little bit too much. But we also, as we move on in a relationship, we want to be able to kind of discuss some of these things and work through them and be there for each other. Okay. So that's, that's where I am pile number three. I think this is very much negotiable. Okay. I do. I just don't want to ever see you guys hiding your feelings because you don't want to be drama or you don't want to be too much or you don't want to be this or you don't want to be that. You should be, you know, we're adults, right? Pile number three. Sometimes we're going to get upset. Sometimes we're going to be perfectly fine. All right. But I mean, you have a right to your feelings too. Okay. I just want to like remind you guys of that. And I'm not saying that this person doesn't respect that. I'm just saying if you have an inclina inclination to hide that, then, you know, it's okay. It's okay to have off days or to have drama every once in a while. Okay. So pile number three, I just don't want to see you guys being hard on yourselves or, um, you know, taking the emotional aspect of yourself and just casting it aside and things like that. And, you know, like the past doesn't have any value. Fuck it. I get it. The past sucks at times, pile number three, but there is a lot to be learned. And I feel you guys have learned a lot from the past. And, you know, a lot of times relationships are negotiations, like if you show me mine, I'll show you your, you know, if you show, if I show you mine, will you show me yours, right? And then if we can still coexist with each other, and even if we see each other, like not on our best day, then we know we found a keeper. You know what I'm saying, pile number three? So that is what I am getting for you, my loves. I hope that that reading resonated and brought you some clarity. Overall, I feel pretty positive, okay? Um, some readings I'm just like, no, I, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling positive. Okay. <laughs> but I, overall, I feel positive. Let's see where this goes. You know, that's my thought. Let's see where this goes and see what happens. All right. Pile number three. And for those of you that would like to go deeper, you can certainly book a personal reading with me. There's information below for how to do that. And if you'd like a natal chart reading with me, that is another service that I offer. There's a link to my astrology site below, Lilith Rising Astrology, okay? I'm a Renaissance traditional astrologer, and I use the Reggie Montanus house system. All the information that you need to know is on my website if you feel like booking a reading with me. I've just opened up some slots in February, so go ahead and grab one if you want. Take care, everybody, and I wish you many, many blessings on your path.